<laughs> uh, we tried this experiment uh, last year at the GTA Lag, so I'm sorry I'm going to talk keep talking about GTA Lag, to uh, invite more people using meetup.com, and this is basically the results that we came up with. So it's been a, a de facto tool for organizing tech meetups. I go to a lot, and uh, not only tech meetups, there's like all hiking groups around use it, and we have signed up now for one year. And we decided to see, does it work for us? So uh, the things that we wanted to measure is uh, how many people, how many new people show up uh, on our meetings from Meetup and how many paid members we can attract. The way this group works, we're actually a corporation, right? Yes. And we have a $20 membership to our, our gods basically hosting, and sometimes we go to Linux conferences. Uh, and Meetup would it cost us $133 per month, so in order to break even, we needed to get 13 new members. Uh, this is graph of the way it turned out. So uh, blue line is the number of people who said yes on the Meetup. Red line is the number of people who actually showed up. And you see the dip here. We forgot to count people in October and November. And the teal or green line is the number of people that uh, went to the same uh, meeting in 2018, sort of like a control. Although we can't uh, really say that it's a control because the uh, number of people who show up depends on who's talking, what's the weather, and a whole bunch of factors. Uh, we can't control, but uh, there is a bit of a uh, bump, especially in the summer months where, where uh, they are usually slow. Last year we got more people and I think we saw a couple of people from the meetup site who are SVP, yes. So yeah, that's basically what I said. Unfortunately, our membership did not uh, did not increase as much as we hoped. So in 2018, we had 12 members. In 2019, we had 15, although our meetup membership is 211 in a year, which is, I think, OK compared to the other groups. So uh, I think we need a better job at promoting our memberships. By the way, our memberships are open. <laughs> and uh, we can uh, currently justify the expense for the meetup. So we'll just uh, revert to uh, our uh, our um, other venues of getting new people. Uh, so we decided not to renew, but then this thing happened with the meetup.com where they changed pricing options and they eventually reversed the course, but what they wanted to do is charge $2 per attendee instead of ha having six months memberships. So in that case, uh, we spent in 2018 $266. And in that, uh, in, in uh, with the new system, we would got we would have to spend 346 American. Mm -hmm. uh, and in case a lot of people show up to our meetups, then we wouldn't be able to afford it. So this is kind of a big catch for us. So good that we're not doing this, I guess. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so. So, uh, but we still have like 200 people on the meetup side that presumably wants to know about um, our events. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to just export data and there is a button to export data and it gives you nice CSV. Unfortunately, that CSV does not have uh, email addresses of the people. Uh, so at, at first I thought it might be because it's a lock-in, but then the other way of notifying people of what, of anything is just sending everybody a message. So what I'm going to do tomorrow, probably send everybody a message saying, hey, we're closing our meetup page, here's the, the places you can uh, contact us. So it, it, it's kind of weird, but it's not too, too big of a deal. So. Uh, uh, but in the time of using Meetup, I definitely realized the value of uh, announcing that we have this and letting people who are interested in this topic uh, to show up at our meeting. And some people actually do show up. Uh, but uh, as with any commercial platform, like the, the, the thing we have in pricing, that they try to extract as much value as they can. And sometimes we just can't uh, afford this. So. so why don't we try and use open source platforms? So uh, since uh, May 2018, I just kind of uh, found this website. 
It's uh, basically clone of Meta, but it's open source. There is a web page and the project, and that uh, they have the same name, Get Together that Community. Of course, the main feature of Meta, having people to look at our pages, is not there yet. So right now we have about 10 members there versus 200 people in Meetup. Uh, but as far as all the other features there are there, also you can create uh, private groups. And uh, the, the feature I am missing is uh, creating custom questions. So on Meetup we have right now, do you agree to follow our code of conduct? And uh, right now it's not possible to do uh, on Get Together. Maybe I should just ask, uh, create a ticket on GitHub for it. Uh, and the last thing that I really like about Get Together is no notification spam. So whatever meetings I sign up, I'm going to get think one thing, a confirmation that I sign up, and the second thing is the day before the meeting, I will get an email. I'm not going to get constant barrage of, hey, this is happening. Uh, so now Get Together community software. So it is open source, uh, you can, uh, there is a website, but you can create your own website and basically run it. It's written in Python and Django, so I, I especially like this because I can kind of poke around and see what's in there. Uh, this project, one of the aims of this project is to implement federation so it can be on Fediverse, and basically what happens is you can just, it's sort of like RSS for everything, for everybody. And it will just send messages, and you don't need to be on any particular site as long as you get them. Uh, but it's not there yet. But other than that, all the features of uh, Meetup are there. Uh, also, while I was doing this uh, research, uh, there were uh, another similar open source project that I liked. So Chapter is for Free Code Camp. I think it's the same organization that used to be called uh, Ladies Learning Code. There are women learning code. Now it's more like uh, anybody's learning code. And uh, they, they also have frustration with Meetup. So they uh, built their own uh, software kind of a part of uh, chapters in uh, uh, f for each, I think, city or area. Then there is Mobilizon, which is, again, they're trying to uh, implement federation, uh, the, the, mo mostly to get events from Facebook. Uh, the problem with this thing, it's still in development, so there is no source code you look at, there's no releases, but it's developed by Framasoft. Uh, they, it's the same company that uh, develops Peertube, which is very much out there. So I am optimistic that they're going to uh, give us something soon. And there is Goth.io. Again, that, that's the thing I found on the Fediverse. It mostly, uh, it, it's a little bit different. It's mostly about creating and sharing events, maybe more like uh, you, you send a bunch of emails and everybody gets notified. It's more like a replacement for uh, Facebook events rather than Meetup but it still can be used for organizing regular activities. You can just do it mostly over email. Uh, and that's the link for my presentation. Uh, I, I'll post this. Basically, I wrote a blog post based on this, and uh, it has everything and a little bit more than slides. This is the open, a list of open source uh, project trying to implement Meetup. There is think about a dozen projects with different um, in different stages of implementation and different stages of their own. And uh, finally, this link, it's, uh, this is our page with events that we had since uh, May 2019. So please go and uh, sign up there and try it out and file bug reports so this project can uh, keep going. And that's it. Thank you.